Michael Lacey, Life Improvised. Life Improvised, Michael Lacey. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women in it merely players. They have their entrances and their exits, and each man in his life plays many parts. It was in eighth grade English that I first read those words. And to tell you how important they were to me, I can't even remember what book it was from. I knew it was Shakespeare, I knew it sounded great, it was flowery, it was wonderful, it was Shakespeare. And it wasn't until I first took an improv class, though, that I first realized how true those words really were. To give you a little bit of background info, improv is short for improvisational comedy, and they teach classes in it at Theater 99 downtown. And about a year and a half ago, I went and took my first class. And something funny happened. I ended up not only learning about improv, I ended up learning about life. And the first life lesson I got from that was that it's scary. I mean, I, I remember showing up to class the first day, and there were all these people I hadn't met. And, oh, oh no, there was the stage, and the teacher was calling my name, and I was supposed to get up there, and I had to do something, and I had to be funny, and people were supposed to laugh. And, well, as a workshop instructor once put it, I think he really put it best, the stage is like the abyss. You go out there, and you stare into it, and it stares back into you, and it's big, and it's enormous, and you don't know what to do, and you feel like breaking down and crying, because no matter what you do on it, it's meaningless just like your life. <laughs> And I think he was being a little overdramatic, but the point still stands. There is, uncertainty is just incredibly scary. But luckily, I got to lesson two from improv that also applies to life, and that's, it's a team sport. You see, it's not so scary when I get out there and I realize I'm not alone. There's someone else out there with me, my scene partner. Which brings me to lesson two, subset A, which is my job is to make my partner look good. So if I'm in a scene, you know, an improv, my, my job is to make my partner look good. If uh, this applies to other things too, if I'm dancing, you know, my job is to make my partner look good. If I'm in school and I'm working on a project, my job is to make my partner look good. And this applies to relationships, this applies to whatever. Well, but that's all great. How, how do we do that though? Ah, lesson two, subset B. Yes and. When I first learned about this, it's the fundamental core of improv, and I'll explain in a second. But I, I was getting my class ring at the time, and uh, if you look on the bottom here, I know you can't see it from here, but on inscribed, I actually have on the bottom line, yes, and, dot, dot, dot. And the reason for that is those two words are very powerful. See, the idea is this is how we build conversations, this is how we build scenes, this is how we build relationships. And it's based off of yes, which is the agreement, and then and, which is adding something. So in a scene, I might say, oh, you know, I'm running. And my partner would have, would have to agree to that. He would say, yes, we're running. And it's because we're being chased by a tiger. And so we start, we start to build things. And the reason we have this is because too often we start off in conflict. So we have to start with agreement. But just agreement isn't enough. If I were to go up to someone and say, ah, did you hear about the Yankees the other day? And the other person were just to say, Yep. <laughs> well, there's agreement, but we don't have anything else. He's got to add something. You know, yep. Oh, and the umps were terrible. Oh, yeah, I know. And this player, blah, 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 blah. You, you get the idea. We start to build something. We agree, and then we add. And the reason we have to do that, like I mentioned, the conflict, this is lesson two, subset C. Your plans never work out. As I mentioned before, it's scary. And how do we deal with things that are scary? We like to plan. Ah, we can control things. I come up with a plan. I have to go out on stage. I have to be funny. Ooh, we're going to be astronauts. We're going to go to the moon. There's going to be an alien. It's going to be hilarious. This is going to be great. The guy over there has no idea that's what I'm thinking. And if I just steamroll with that idea, we're headed for disaster. I have to recognize that there's another person, and they have ideas too. And once again, this doesn't just apply to improv. This applies to life. So that was lesson two. Life and improv are a team sport. Some other things I learned in improv. Uh, lesson three, silence is okay. Sometimes. <laughs> lesson four, 
you have to commit. And when I first started doing this, it was because I was, I was in a place where I was very comfortable. And often we get into places where we're very comfortable and we can shrink back and everything's kind of nice. But we have to challenge ourselves. It's, it's uncomfortable to really commit to things, right? But yet, when we look in history, we find individuals who have ventured out and who have really committed to things. Or we find actors that have gone out and committed to their characters on stage. We find these big, bold, compelling people. We get George Washington, who was committed to his ideals. We get Lady Gaga, who's committed to being absolutely crazy. But people love her for that. Because if you commit, people will remember. And because they'll see something in you that they want to see some in themselves. Courage, integrity, confidence. And now, the final lesson I learned from improv, lesson five, was the idea of bold choices. Because sometimes, I find I'm, I'm doing everything right. I'm yes ending like I'm supposed to, or in life I'm going through the daily motions, but for whatever reason, I just end up stuck in a rut. Things just kind of level out, not really going well. And that's why I gotta add a little flavor. It's when I've gotta make a bold choice. So if I'm in a scene, maybe I'll go find some random item, the Holy Grail or something, or I'll introduce a cooter to the scene, or I'll suddenly declare my love to my scene partner. But the th same thing applies in life. Sometimes we're going through the motions, we get in a rut. We've got to get out there. We've got to be willing to challenge ourselves. We've got to make those bold choices. And when we do, we find that the world is indeed the stage, and life is better improvised. Thank you.